Hello, grade 10. Uh, we're going to be doing introduction to sets today. Okay, so just a bit of a warning. We're going to go over quite a number of definitions and new notation. So we're just going to lay the foundation to sets today so you guys can be successful um, uh, throughout the whole unit. And like I said, so there, there's a lot of new vocab, uh, a lot of new notation that you may or may have not seen before. So whenever you need to, pause the video. You already know this, but pause the video, especially when it comes to um, this video, because there's so many definitions um, that you do have to write down for today. Okay, so one of the first definitions you do have to write down is, well, what is a set? Right? You're probably wondering, what is a set? So a set is a collection of things. Now, things, those things can be numbers, could be people, could be letters, could be anything. Uh, now, for example, you know of the real number system, right? So the real number system is one of the more famous sets um, that we talk about in math. Um, so we have whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, and so on and so forth. In this set, well, we have these three things. These three things happen to be socks, shoes, pants. So these three things are composed within this set, right? In this set, we have set B, um, and it has four numbers that are defined uh, with set B. It's four, two, one, and three. Okay, so these are elements or members of set B. And now we have the alphabet, right? Alphabet is a set as well from A to Z, right? Again, those are elements or members of those of, uh, of the alphabet. So how do we write this? How do we write sets? Okay, so there's certain notation you need when writing sets. So as far as sets go, Okay, so as you can see, um, we write them with curly brackets on the left and right, right? We always include a capital letter when we want to find sets. So this is set A. Set A has members, which are including 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to 9. So these are members or elements of this set. Okay, so set A represents all the digits we use to write numbers, right? Also, what you notice is the comma in between each member, right? Kind of uh, differentiates between one number to the next number, okay? So, again, some new notation that you want to know is this symbol right here. So this symbol tells us an element of. This means an element of. So, for example, if I write 4, 4 is an element of A. Right, which is true, because I see four within this list as well. Or I can write eight is an element of set A, right? Because I also see eight within this uh, within this list. On the other hand, well, what does this mean? If this means an element of, this means not an element of, right? So, for example, I could say F is not an element of A. Right, which is true because I don't see F here. Or I could say, um, how about 10 is not an element of set A. I do see 0 and 1, but I don't see 10 within this list. So that we need to know that notation as well. All right, finite and infinite. So finite is um, basically a list of elements that doesn't go on forever. So it doesn't go on forever. It has a beginning and has an end. So as you can see for set A, uh, it has a beginning of 2 and has an end of 21. There's only 6 members within this set. On the other hand, we ha could have an infinite set. So infinite set means it goes on forever and ever and ever and never stops. So for set B, we have 1, we have 7, but notice these 3 dots. This means it goes on forever. So Set B, what's representing is the counting numbers, okay? Or we can say natural numbers. So for natural numbers or counting numbers, there's too many elements that we can list. Um, and it goes on forever. So we write these three dots to symbolize it goes on forever and ever and never stops. All right, some new notation. Again, a lot of new, nota new, new notation that you do have to know. Here we have um, how certain things we want to put in set building notation. So some some of these uh, symbols you do have to know. Okay, And there's a few more uh, 
along with this list that we might discuss in class. So for the real number system, real numbers are anything that can be put on a number line. Well, that's represented by R. Natural numbers, so these are numbers you learn as a little, little kid. Uh, so you start off with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and, and so on and so forth, right? That's symbolized with the letter N. Well, if we have natural numbers, we also have whole numbers. What's the difference? Only difference is 0. Okay, 0 is included within whole numbers, and that's symbolized with W. Integers, okay, that's actually positive and negative whole numbers. So we have negative numbers that also includes, include 0, and we have positive whole numbers, okay, and that's represented by Z. And then finally, we have rational numbers. Rational numbers is basically anything that can be put as a fraction. That's represented as Q. Okay? So, um, set builder notation. Again, some of this notation is new, which is okay, but we'll kind of get to know it a bit uh, today. So here we have set D. Set D has um, uh, the variable of X. So these are the values we plug in. The values have to meet this condition. The condition is... Well, the numbers have to be between negative 3 and 6. It also mentions this restriction. So it says the only numbers you can use is integers. Okay? So let's kind of break this down a bit. Right? So remember, x is our variable, so the values we plug in. Right? Between negative 3 and 6, that happens to be our condition. Okay? So it's a condition for x to be in this set. And again, natural numbers, or sorry, integers are the only numbers we can use, okay? Now, if there's nothing written, we can assume that x is an element of uh, our real number system. So any number. Any number that can be put on a real number system. All right, I'm going to give you one problem, okay? So this problem, has, you want to list the five smallest numbers of the following set, okay? So pause the video, try this out on your own. And I'll go over this in just a second. All right, so here we have set C. Let's go over this. Um, it says the condition is, well, the condition is the, the value we choose have to, has to multiply by 6, right? And the numbers that we can now use, what we're restricted by, is integers, but notice it's plus. So only positive integers, okay? So, again, we're listing the five smallest numbers. So positive the five smallest numbers of positive integers. So well, that would be end up that would end up being one, two, three, four, and five. Those are five smallest numbers, positive integers, um, that we can use to multiply by six by, and that's how we wanted to find set C by. So set C. So when we plug in one. We end up multiplying this by 6, so it ends up being 6. Plug in 2, we end up getting 12. Plug in 3, we get 18, 24, and then 30. So that's how we wanted to find set C by, by using our five smallest numbers, meeting this condition. Take our five smallest numbers, multiply by 6, and we end up with our set C. Okay, So this is a finite set. Alright, so empty set. What is an empty set? Well, it's empty set, or you can say null set. So either you can say empty or null set. And what this means is it's basically a set with nothing in it. So you can write that as uh, this symbol or this symbol. So you might see both. So for example, if we have set P, and set P says the set of days that uh, in a week which starts with the letter A. Okay, well, is there any day that starts with the letter A? Um, well, no. So there's there's no letters that start with the letter A that, um, when it comes to day of the week. So we write this as set P is a null set, and we use the symbol of a null set. Equal sets. Okay, so equal sets are two sets that are equal if they have the same list of elements. So take a look at A, B, and C. Well, which one of these is actually an equal set? Okay. A and B have the same elements, so they are equal sets. So this is how we write equal sets. A set A is equal to set B. On the other hand, um, 
What if they're not equal? We can write that as set A and set C are not equal sets because they have different elements, okay, as you can see. Set A is not the same as set C. All right, so subsets and proper subsets, okay? So you want to focus here because you really, really do want, um, you want to know the difference between the two. So let's go over subsets first. Subsets is a set containing some elements of another set. So let's take a look at P. Let's, let's take a look, look at Q. So P is a subset of Q if every element of P is found in Q. Well, is that true? So let's look at P, 1, 2, and 3. Is that found in Q? Yes, 1, 2, and 3. And there's some extra sets as well. Okay, so P is a part of Q. That's true. Well, if P is a part of Q, that means P is a subset of Q. And this is how we want to write the notation. P is a subset of Q because every element in P is also an element in Q. Okay? Now, on the other hand, what is a proper subset? Okay, so we discuss subsets. Let's discuss proper subsets. Proper subset is a subset, so it's also a subset, but it's not equal to. All right? It cannot be equal to. So in other words, if a proper subset, if it is a proper subset, then all the elements are found in the other set, set but there's at least one more element that's not in the previous set. Okay? So again, is set P a part of set Q? Yes. 1, 2, and 3, and 1, 2, and 3. Right? Both sets are not equal to. So as you can see, there's 4 and there's 5. So these two sets are not equal to, they're equal to each other, but I know set P is a part of set Q, okay? So that would mean P is a proper subset of Q, okay? Let me give you another example, okay, or the opposing example. Let's look at set C and let's look at set D, okay? So I know that set C is a subset of set D, 4, 5, and 6, 4, 5, and 6. Right? It's just in a different order, which is okay. But every element of C is found in, um, in set P. Now, the question is, is C a proper subset of set D? Well, what do you guys think? This would be a no, right? This would be a no because all the elements of C are in D, but they're equal sets. Okay, They're the same exact set. So that's why it's not a proper subset. So C is not a proper subset of D. Okay? So we have universal sets. Universal sets is basically uh, all the elements under consideration. So let, let's look at this example. Uh, we have set A, set B, set C, and set D. Um, and within these sets, we have the students of Mr. Majid. We have the students of Mr. David, students of Mr. Sharif and the students of Mr. Cal, okay? So our universal set would basically be all the elements or all the consider uh, all the elements under consideration. So it's any grade 10 math student or gra any grade 10 math class because any grade 10 student is taking a grade 10 math class. So that would be our universal set. Now, there's something called a complementary set. Okay, it's part of your practice problem today. If we know our universal set is 10 to 1 all the way to 10 to 11, okay, and I'm explaining set A is included, uh, we're including 10 to 1, 10 to 4, 10 to 6, and 10 to 9, I want you to find what the complement of A is, okay? I'm not going to explain what it is. I want you to kind of go and hunt to find the answer. So go to page 6 in your textbook and find out what complementary sets are, okay? So that would be your, um, your practice problem for tonight.